As part of my round-the-world trip, in 2022, I was lucky enough to spend a week in Austria. After spending over two months in very hot Asia, it was wonderful to fly over the Austrian Alps. They were so gorgeous. Upon landing, I reconnected with my friend Maureen, who I know from my life in the Bay Area of Northern California. This was our first trip together, and we had a fantastic time. This is her brother, Scott. He and his wife, Manuela, live in Graz, Austria. Manuela is from Graz. And once they got married, they lived for a while in California, and now they're living in, back in Austria. And we were lucky enough to be invited to stay with them. It's, there's nothing better than staying with the locals. For our first few days in Vienna, we stayed in this hotel, which was in a really good part of town. Basic, but the people who ran it were very nice. The first place we went was Schönbrunn Palace, slightly out of the city center, and it was spectacular. Once Manuela joined us in Vienna, we went to see a famous clock, Ankerklock. I don't know how to say it in German. It was an insurance company, Anker, A-N-K-E-R, insurance company. They built this clock in 1914. There are figures in the clock that represent life and death. Uh, along with the hourglass showing life uh, dissipating. And then there are all of these characters who at certain times will sort of dance along on the clock. They're historical figurines. It reminds me of It's a Small World at Disneyland. Here's a picture of Empress Maria Teresa as she's going along. They also have other figurines such as Charlemagne, Charlemagne in English, who is a relative of my family's on my mother's side. Uh, there were a lot of school groups waiting for this clock to do its thing. I unfortunately did not get a video of the figurines moving across the clock. It was not as constant or as easy to guess when it was going to happen as I would have thought. We also went to the Hofburg Palace, which is in central Vienna, where the emperors of the Austro-Hungarian Empire lived when they were in town. The Schönbrunn Palace was considered like in the country. Now it's really just at the edge of the city, but it used to be considered in the middle of the country. So this is where most of the royalty are buried. They're uh, uh, buried in sarcophagus, sarcophagi. This is also where the Lipizzan stallions have their school. It's called the Spanish Riding School. And I grew up in the 60s, and we just really always wanted to see the Lipizzan stallions. I've never seen them in person, but they're remarkable. And this is where they're trained. We also went to the Hundred Wasser House, named after an artist who built this crazy block of flats. It's uh, very eclectic. There are a lot of tourists there, and they have a big uh, gift shop. And there's uh, notes everywhere that you're not to bother the residents because people really live in those houses. The other thing that we did a lot of in Vienna was eating. <laughs> Coming from Asia to come to Austria, where the food is not only so good, but also they have a real coffee culture. So it is uh, absolutely the thing to do in the afternoon to go to one of these beautiful coffee shops like this. And they are known for their wonderful coffee and their pastries. And yes, this is where I started gaining weight on my trip, <laughs> and it didn't end. <laughs> well, the trip in Vienna was absolutely wonderful. 
Thanks very much to our hosts, Scott and Manuela. They just made it unbelievably wonderful. Thanks for watching. Ciao.